say, talk to me on Twitter. I'm Peter Dobby, uh, hashtag at BBC Dobbs, or give us a call on plus four four twenty thirty one sixty two forty two forty two. We're talking about two main stories today: the aftermath of that ice slip on Everest, and also your memories of that writer, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. We'll get to that in just a moment. We're going to stay with Everest because we're going to talk now to Pemba Sherpa. We're going to talk to Nazia Sabia. We're also going to talk to Reinhold Messner. Uh, Pemba, good to talk to you as well. When you heard the news, given your job, what went through your mind? Well, I mean, this is a totally a uh, accident. And, you know, I mean, this could happen anywhere. And, uh, this uh, this is totally has to do with uh, mother nature, you know, and it's unfortunate that this happened and, uh, you know, they caught this avalanche up in the altitude and it's really sad to uh, see all these people get killed. And, you know, uh, as, the, as Simon was mentioning, yeah, you know, it's a part of the nature and, you know, uh, if you're a mountaineer, you are taking risks and, you know, in my opinion, I think this is uh, part of the risks. Okay. Yes. We're also joined by Reinhold Messner. Now, Reinhold, if I've got this right, you were the first person to scale Everest without any supplementary oxygen, so you did it just on lung power, yes? Yes, I was the first one to try it together with Peter Hamelin to go up without oxygen. We succeeded in 78, and two years later, I tried to do it alone, and I could go to the summit by myself. But this is a totally different approach from what is happening today on Everest. Why did you give up being a Sherpa in Nepal? Well, I first came out here to visit. You know, I was just going to stay here for like a couple months. I mean, and then explore around the Rockies and then go back. And then I found, you know, Colorado is quite beautiful place. And, uh, you know, uh, I liked it here and, you know, I really got into rock climbing. And I stay here. So you stayed here. Okay. Um, perhaps you could give me your reaction to the tragedy that happened uh, on Everest over the past few days. Well, I mean, it's a... Uh, you know, I, I mean, obviously, it, it is a uh, avalanche, and it's an accident. It, it has to do with the mother nature, and you know, and mountaineering and climbing. You know, people do take a risk, and uh, and you know, this is uh, part of the risk, and it's kind of unfortunate that all these people lost their life, and you know, left all their you know children and uh, wives are behind. Uh, which is real sad to see, but, you know, again, this is all has to do with the mother nature. And how, may I ask you, Pamba, how difficult a job is it to be a Sherpa? It's a very extremely difficult job. It's probably one of the toughest and uh, riskiest job out in the, in the world, I would say. You know, uh, you're in, you know, you're in altitude, we have to deal with... I mean, you have to deal with the sick client, you have to deal with the altitude, uh, you have to deal with the, uh, you know, crevices and, you know, like this kind of avalanches. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's no question. I mean, it is an extremely difficult job. So the Sherpas at the moment uh, that have been helping climbers up Everest, uh, they are thinking about a work stoppage. What do you think? I'm sorry, what was it? The Sherpas right. are thinking, follow, let, let me let me actually rephrase it because it depends how uh, we, we have put it. Sherpa guides in Nepal are demanding more compensation for the families of 13 that were killed in an avalanche on Mount Everest on Friday. Um, they are considering stopping work if they are not given more money. What do you think of that idea? I think it's the right thing to do. You know, I think I certainly, uh, I certainly think that Sherpa definitely uh, deserve more pay for what they do. You know, considering like how much the money, how much money the government collect. I mean, you know, group of seven people. I mean, they charge like sixty, sixty thousand, sixty plus thousand dollars for just for the permit. 
How much do they charge? Let me get those figures. Uh, last year was $60,000 for a group of seven. Okay. So basically $10,000 a person to climb Mount Everest. Just put the permit. And, and that how money much would go a to get paid? No, that money go to just go to the government. Okay, and the uh the the Sherpas they get paid based on their qualification and their skill. Anyway from anywhere they go on Everest I would say they make any uh anywhere between from three to uh three to five thousand dollars. Or some might even make up to like six thousand dollars, some really, you know, experience uh climb experience climbers. For each climb? Right, for each climb. Yeah, and uh and you know, which is you know, which is lots of money in that part of the world, but you know, considering like the risks they take and the kind of a job they do, I mean, it's really not that much, you know. I understand. Um, do you think that the government will give more compensation to the Sherpas? No, I don't think so. Yeah, you know, and and that's I think that's I personal thing. If I were over in Nepal and I were doing this job and I that's. I would definitely, you know, I would, I would go after the Nepal government. Actually, you know, you know, where do they put all that money? You know, I mean, that's a lot of money that when it, that go on the mountains. But you know, disaster like this, the Sherpas definitely, you know, deserve some some of that money. So the way it works at the moment is that the climbers pay the government. The government then hire the Sherpas. And no, no, pay no, the no. Is, is that correct? It, no, that doesn't work like that. How it, okay, it tell me work, how it works. There are lots of commercial outfitters, okay? There are lots of commercial outfitters. You know, most of them are Western company, actually. And uh, they are really a business, you know, it's like any other business there, basically. So the Western commercial company, you know, they find the clients, all right? And they promise these client, their clients to, you know, provide good service and get them to the top of the mountains. And then, you know, the Western commercial company go with a local company over in Nepal, who's your, who's your, which most of the companies are owned by Sherpas in Nepal. And then the local company in Nepal will do the most of the work in terms of getting permit, dealing with the government logistics, Finding all the surface guide, taking to the mountains, you know, hiring, you know, helicopters and all that. So basically, in a, in the ultimate, it's a big business. So it's big business and a lot of money to be made. Um, what is the relationship like between the Sherpas and the climbers? In the relationship between the climbers and Sherpas, are, I think is very very good. You know. Uh, you know, the Sherpas really respect their uh, their clients. And the clients respect, you know, as far as I know, as, and the clients respect, you know, uh, the Sherpas, the fact that, you know, they help, the Sherpas help achieve their goal. Do any expeditions take place without Sherpas? Uh, as far as I know, I mean, very few. I mean, there are some of the, you know, some really good alpinists in the world. I mean, they try to go their own, but usually not. You know, especially like, you know, a mountain like Everest. You know, they definitely need the uh, Sherpa support. How has climbing Mount Everest changed, do you think, in recent years? Well, it had changed dramatically. And I think, you know, I think it's kind of, like I say, it's kind of becoming a more of a business than climbing, yeah, and uh, uh, so I mean it's good and bad. I see it. I mean I see a bad because there are lots of negative impact going into like the like what you know like you know like for example like all the Sherpas are dying, you know, and leaving all their family behind. I mean, then one who really suffer has to suffer is the Sherpas, their their family. You know, lots of the Sherpas there who just died. They have like children. You know, they have uh, some of them have like seven children, and you know, who's gonna feed these children? You know, and 
And I probably should say again that the compensation that has been offered by the government that, that's is not enough. That's the compens compensation they get and the insurance money they get is it not even close. You know, my guess is if they're lucky, if the family were lucky, they would get maybe five thousand dollars. Okay, and five thousand dollars is not much to raise family. You know, uh, most of the Sherpas, I mean, like these, all these guys, they went up in the mountain and lost their life. Uh, you know, they have wife and children. And you know what? My heart and my heart go to those wife and the children, because the wife and children are. I mean, they're really relying on the uh, their, you know, their husband income. I'd be interested what you think will happen next. Uh, it sounds to me, from what you're telling me, that you don't think the Nepali government uh, will be supportive of the Sherpas. What about the people who use their services, be it the Western companies? Do you think they will support the, this work stoppage or this support for bigger compensation or, or better insurance? You know, I doubt it. I, I, I don't know, maybe some company will, you know, uh, in the, or the clients, you know. I, I, you know I have, this is not the first time I've seen in Nepal, uh, that part of the world, you know, the sheriff has been killed in the mountains. And, you know, what I see is lots of them are, in the ultimate, who is really suffering is the wife and children, they are left behind. And uh, some seems to get help with the clients, not much the, uh, you know, the outfitter, the Western company. Uh, you know, some, some of the clients, they go with them up to the mountains. Sometimes they do some kind of fundraising and they seem to help the, uh, you know, the wife and children. But usually, uh, the wife and the children, the one uh, I see who get suffer. With the Sherpas, uh, just to give us a little bit of, of the day-to-day, -day, Pamba, um, they do more than guide people, correct? I mean, they often have to carry equipment, uh, go ahead of the climbers. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, the name Sherpa is all confusing to lots of people. Some people think the Sherpas are guide. Some people think the Sherpas are porters. And some people think the, you know, Sherpas mean climbers. And it's all wrong. In the ultimate, Sherpas means ethnic group. Okay? And shepherds are very like you know very much like ethnic group you know uh, you know uh, they are shepherds they are shepherds doctor I myself I'm a shepherd I'm a pilot I'm an engineer uh, they are shepherds lawyers shepherds are like anybody else but however after centuries of living in high altitude shepherds body have developed greater capability of getting oxygen into their bloodstream and muscle in thin air that leave the lowlander gasping. This physical contribute combined with amiable third character had made Sherpas popular with climber ever since first Mount, er Mount Everest ex expedition, right? Mm -hmm. And as a result, Sherpas have become some of the best alpinists in the world. And uh, for most Sherpas, uh, they enjoy doing this job. And also they are more capable to do this job than any other uh, tribe of people in the world. I understand. Well, that's everything that we need, Pamba. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. And uh, enjoy Boulder. Yeah, you too. <laughs> I uh, hope I do. I hope we okay. get out there soon. Okay. All the best. Yeah, you too. Take it easy. Bye. Bye-bye, Tampa. -bye.